Alrighty, good morning. It is day six, and for a second there, I thought my phone wasn't gonna work anymore. It said, recording failed. Um, so I lost a little bit of footage, but that is how these things go. Um, it is day six. I had a dream that I drank a smoothie and one of my close friends, he saw me and he got really upset and he was like, you have to fucking start over. And I was playing the card of like, well, but I only had one sip and it was kind of this autopilot thing. So it was an accident. So I'm not going to. And it just like really angered him. But I just remember, man, in the dream, I was like, fuck, dude, no, I'm not going to start over. So it was a relief to wake up from that and realize that I had not actually reset. Anyway, <clears throat> it is about 100 degrees already. It feels like I had a hard time going to sleep last night. Like I, I usually read before bed and I'll read, you know, for like 30 minutes to an hour. Usually that's like enough to for me to fall asleep. And if that doesn't work, then I'll usually bring out my phone and listen to a podcast or something. Last night I couldn't do that. So I just read for like two and a half to three hours. And I think part of it was the book I'm reading is so damn good. It is Educated by Tara Westover. It is like what I aspire my, to write in my memoirs. But anyway, I am late for work <laughs> because my recording failed initially. So I've got to go do that now. Oh, oh, it's a Saturday. It's the same for you. It's every day is a Saturday for you. Oh, you got my thing. Be careful, buddy. Get your claws out of it. Get your freaking claws out of it. Oh, thank goodness. Who's the cutest dog in the world? Who's the cutest in the world? Oh, it's you, it's you, it's you. Oh, oh my goodness. It's better than sugar. This is way better than sugar. All right. I got very caught up trying to recreate one of my favorite soundtracks. And it's actually turned out quite nice, but I don't want to spend the whole day today making music again, because that would just feel like distracting myself. Um, I've been doing that for two days now and it's taken up a lot of time. So I'm gonna eat this food right now, then play around with GarageBand for like an hour tops for the rest of the day. Then journal, go on a walk, get my body moving and do more reconnecting and not disconnecting. In case you haven't noticed, every time I come and eat breakfast, I have this little guy begging for food. Fuck me. some shit done. I finished the painting and I don't know if I like it. It looked different in my mind. In my mind I thought I want to do one of those alphabet soup things. Not soup, but you know those, like not the crossword, but the other game. I want to do one of those that says, stop doing so much. And I just feel like I can't tell that it says that right away. Like it takes me a second and that's not the intention, but I know some people that do too much. So I might just give it as a gift to them. I can feel it's just getting so close to the end that I'm just like, fuck, man, I just want some sugar. <laughs> ah, to escape, man, there's a part of me that just wants to escape. In a way, I, I'm still escaping, you know, to some degree by painting this fucking sign, by making so much music, it's like, I've just done a lot. So I guess the lesson there is that perhaps the goal is not to remove the distractions, but to understand what they are distracting me from. Something to think about. This is my third beef stick of the day, which means I'll only have one left for tomorrow. See how we do. It looks like they boarded up the entrance to the trail, but lucky for me, homeless people don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> 
Oh no. They put a fucking lock on it. Can I climb through there? I guess we'll find out. Bro, why are they doing this? Ugh. Well, that sucks, man. I mean, it'll work for today, but this is not a long-term play. Ugh. What the fuck? Why? It's my walk. Why would they do this? Man, that's just legitimately sad. I mean, after the series is over, it'll be easier to come without the camera and the microphone and all this. So I could still technically make this walk happen if that stays how it was just now, but I have a feeling that it won't. I think it's just the homeless. I've noticed several times that homeless people will come in and steal water. But fuck, I've got six more months left at my apartment and this walk was my favorite thing about living here. I don't know, man, guess cross my fingers, hope that the homeless keep finding a way in so that I can keep finding a way out. A test or a sign. Public trash can fruit never looked so good in my life. Ah, I cannot wait, man. I think the first thing I'm gonna get is some banana bread. I want so much sugar. It's no wonder that I did poorly with focusing in school and never did homework and just was always tired. This is what I had as meals growing up. Breakfast would usually be a bagel, toasted bagel slathered with butter and sprinkled with five, six tablespoons of sugar and cinnamon mix. School, you know, early age, my mom would pack maybe like two frozen corn dogs or like a quesadilla cut into four. And then, you know, getting more into living with my dad eras, I would get some money for school. And at school, I would just buy a liter of Coca-Cola and two bags of potato chips. And then I would buy a chocolate muffin. And that was what I ate up until about three in the afternoon when I would get home from school. And then I would have like my first real meal of the day, which were, you know, healthy empanadas or like, but I would add probably another liter and a half of Coca-Cola before the end of the night. So, you know, and some Oreos, probably like a trip to a 7-Eleven. So I've come a long way, right? Today, my sugar intake looks like almond milk, almond butter, fruit, and the occasional pastry. Much better than I was doing when I was a teenager, but according to Nourishing Traditions, the book I'm reading, not healthy enough. Sugar is just, it's hard, man. It's in everything and it tastes so good. What tastes really good are natural sugars, like, you know, those superfood bites that I was looking at the other day. Just shit that I know, like, maybe this isn't healthy, but it's also not like a Pepsi. Back to the walk. They cannot take this walk away from me. I will climb that fucking wooden wall if I have to. Yeah, man, it's just so beautiful. And this is my happy place. This is where I come to reconnect. Just another reason, another sign that I have to leave this neighborhood. You know, first we had supposed break-ins into our mail room, and then we had a flood. Then we had our power cut. It's just, now there's this fucking trails being closed. There was somebody, somebody was literally shot and killed like across the street from my apartment. Not even from the building or the complex, but literally my apartment. Somebody was shot and killed by police and I actually woke up during that gunfire. So living in the city, man, living in the city. It's just getting pretty not ideal. And it's interesting, man, because on one hand, you know, I can look at all this through the lens of like, like Gotham. The reality is that there are enough things happening like would be happening in Gotham to where I could see that and I could definitely paint my world that way. Or I could just go to my little spiritual community events and my group things and just pretend like that's all that is happening, right? And obviously it's a mix of both, but I definitely feel like both of those worlds are lacking a, an acceptance of each other's perspective. 
And sometimes I feel like I'm caught in the middle, right? Where I'm like, hell yeah, I'm all about spirituality and feeling my emotions and doing that work. But then also, hey man, you know, it's important to stay up to date with current events to a certain extent. Food shortages, it's important to know that that's happening. Hyperinflation, it's important to know that that's happening. Biden fell off a bicycle. Eh, maybe not as important to know that that's happening. So, you know, I still pick and choose what I tune into, but I don't think that that whole mindset of like, oh, well, I don't watch the news anymore is actually very safe. And now, of course, I'm not talking about CNN and fucking no, don't watch that. But I'm just saying like staying up to date with legitimate journalists, reliable sources of information. Not fucking Beyonce or Lady Gaga, you know, not that bullshit, but actual people with their boots on the ground. You know, like I talked to a guy from my men's group that was visiting from Australia and he literally told me how it is. You know, he said like, yeah, man, it's not as bad as they would make it seem, but people definitely in Australia, they have just this bizarre undertone that was left over from all of the shit that happened and is still kind of happening. So he said, you know, like, I can still kind of live my life, but it's not the same. And, you know, so now I have actual somebody from Australia telling me how it is, at least where he's from, which I think was like Perth or something like that. Just some thoughts from the walk. There's a beautiful hue of pink and purple in the clouds right now as the sun finishes setting. I'm just gonna enjoy the last couple hours of the night before bed and read more of Tara Westover's Educated, which is just blowing my mind. Maybe journal and yeah, call it a night. I feel like as much as there have been little bouts of like I want sugar or I want to masturbate or all this other fun stuff, I mostly feel at peace, man. It's weird, man, like, it's been easier not to engage in masturbation or consuming sugar, all these things, as soon as I just said, like, I'm not doing it for X amount of time. Uh, whereas when it's just kind of a free-for-all, I'm like, well, I could do it today, why not? Because I could do it tomorrow again, and I could do it the next day, and it's like, I could just do it whenever I want, so I'm just gonna do it all the time. Going on that walk and just seeing the access point blocked off like that just gave me like a just a bad feeling about what's happening in Austin the change which you know I know that it's inevitable but it just felt very sudden going from performing improv going on dates all the time and riding my bike to my favorite food truck before it moved going from that to just I don't even want to go downtown you know and i don't know how much of it maybe is that austin has changed and how much of it is just that i've changed because the people at these places probably are the same people but over the last couple years man i just i don't see any of them or any of it the same it's all been tainted by the last couple years and just all the violence and all the rhetoric and all this bullshit man it's like so many people are full of shit i'm at this weird point in my life where i have my foot in a couple different sort of groups of friends but none of them really feel like i'm fully in yet just doesn't feel like i've found my people and so i don't really have that many very deep connections you know there's my brother there are my friends back home that's really it, man. I mean, everyone that I've met in Austin has either moved or I just met them and it's hard to get to know them for some reason. Although I will say, there is a group of friends that I saw the weekend before this challenge started and I was actually talking to the guy that was hosting the party. This was where Patty was and his name is Justin. And I remember we were just lying down on the floor talking and he was telling me these really interesting stories from his years in LA and 
at some point I remember just saying like, yeah, man, I just, just knowing that you guys are on the same page as I am about this whole COVID nonsense and all this stuff, that alone makes me feel safe with you guys. Just that. And he said, well, yeah, man, it's because we're not fucking gaslighting the shit out of you. And I was like, yeah, man, that's, that's exactly it. And so I don't see him or that group of people as much, but there is something just like, they're very warm, they're very friendly, they're very open and accepting. And, but it's just still, it's been a little bit difficult to go deep with that group, uh, partly because they're so far away and I don't have a car, but the times that I do see them just feel really nice, really rewarding and really worth my time. But yeah, so wrapping up day six, I feel pretty even keeled, pretty optimistic that I'll make it through. There's one more day. I have one beef stick left. That is going to be challenging, but I will make it work. Um, I don't know what I'll do tomorrow. I have the day off. Probably a little bit more fun, a little bit more disconnected from my computer and from gadgets. Uh, so yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for spending this beautiful, beautiful Saturday with me. Have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you in the morning. Bye-bye.